Hello and welcome to the fourth episode of our Quarkus and Langchain series. In this episode, we will look into agents and how we can make ChatGPT call functions in our Quarkus service to either perform actions or retrieve some data to enhance its context. So let's get started. So let's have a look at the documentation. In the documentation for the Quarkus Langchain extension, uh, we have a chapter on agents and tools, and we will have a brief look at this. So an agent is basically our large language model. Um, it will make decisions and be able to use tools. So we will provide the tools to the large language model and it can then choose which tool to call and with which parameters. And what is a tool? A tool is just a function with given parameters and we will tell the large language model how to use it and it will then be able to call the function and in return get back the result of the function so it can continue working with that information. Let's have a look at it in the code. I went ahead and prepared a small example. Um, we go back to our mail resource. We have a simple mail service, mail AI service that we can call via a REST endpoint. And here I already prepared a system message and a function that just forwards the prompt as the user prompt. If you want to learn more, about the memory handling that we also need to be able to use tools, I recommend looking into episode two of this series, where we explicitly talk about the memory management. For now, we take this as a given. We need to provide a memory ID to access the specific memory or chat conversation of a given user. In our system message, we see I defined, this is an email assistant AI, it helps the user to write emails. And here we provide some examples, some steps, what the model can do to help the user. Now, we do not just want the model to help us write the content of the email or the subject, but we want to be able to really send a mail during the chat. And this is what we will do now with the agents and tools. To be able to send an email with our large language model, we need to define a tool. For this, we first needed Java Bean. So let's define an email service. In our case, we make this application scoped, but of course you can also use other scopes. And I will define a simple function here, send email to agent. We have three parameters. This is the email address, the subject, and the content. For simplicity's sake, I will now not send the email. I will just add a log message here and print out the email address that we want to use, the subject and the content. So we can later see that ChatGPT was able to call this function. But since this is a normal Quarkus bean, you can inject anything you want here. You can inject your database, you can inject the mailer, for example. So you could do that, mailer, and just use the mailer then to send an email. As I said, for simplicity's sake, we will not do this right now, but we will focus on using this function with ChatGPT. To be able to use this function with ChatGPT, we need to do two steps. The first step is we need to annotate the function with add tool. A tool requires a single parameter, which is a human readable description of what this function can do. So it can be something like, sends an email to a single recipient's email address with the given subject and content. So later on, when we use this tool, Quarkus will automatically create a configuration for ChatGPT and send along this description with the list of parameters for this function so that ChatGPT knows what it can do with this function and how to use it. So now let's make use of this tool in our AI service. For this, we just need to provide the tools parameter here in the register AI service annotation. This allows us to enable tools for specific AI services. 
In our case, we will now just add the email service class here. And now Quarkus knows that for this mail AI service, it can use all the tool annotated functions from this bean. Let's test this first tool and see if we can send an email. So Quarkus has started. Let's make some requests with Postman. Again, we just make a simple get call to the mails endpoint where we provide the query and the user ID. User ID is important for the memory management. So let's first start with, hi, I'm Andreas. So the bot tells me it can help me write an email. It needs to know the email address of the recipient and the subject and content. So let's provide this. So ChatGPT formulated an email for us, so far nothing new. And now it asks us to review this draft and uh, then we could send it. So looks good to me, send it please. And now the fun begins. So now ChatGPT responded with, it sent the email successfully to this email account. So let's have a look what happened in the background. What we can see here in the logs at first, is that we have our conversation. So this is what is sent to ChatGPT when I entered the last message. Um, first, we have the system message, the original message, how the system should behave. Then we have our first user message, the first response, second user message, second response, and now the third user message. Looks good, please send it. So what else can we see here? We see the tools array, and it contains an object of type function. And it defines how the tool, our send email to recipient function, can be used by ChatGPT. So first we have the description here, the sends an email to a single recipient's email address. Then we have the properties. So these are the parameters, the email address, subject, content, they are all of type string. And we also tell ChatGPT that the email address, subject, and content are required parameters. So they need to be provided. And that's all what we send to ChatGPT. And that's enough so that ChatGPT now knows it can respond with, hey, please call this function for me. And how does this look like? So we have the response from ChatGPT here. And when we look at this, we see this is the ID of the message. It comes from the GPT-4 model. And then we have here the assistant role, so the ChatGPT is requiring us to make a function call to send email to recipient. And it's providing a JSON with the parameters. So here we have the email address parameter with test at consus.com. And we have the subject and also the content being provided here to this function. And as a result, we see our log statement from the email service where we say sending an email to test at consus.com with the subject and the content. And then the process continues. So now the function call in our case had a void result. So there was nothing uh, returned from this function. So we just return to ChatGPT that the role tool, so here was the, the function call, now the next message is automatically generated by Quarkus. It says it's a tool response and it's just success because there was no result. So now ChatGPT knows, hey, the email sending, which I called, it worked. And therefore it can return with this message telling us that it successfully sent the email. But let's go a step further. Until now, we only called a function and provided some data to Quarkus to perform an action. Now we want to retrieve some data from Quarkus. So for example, we can query a database. In our example, I don't want to provide the email address. I don't remember the email address of somebody, but I would rather like the system to automatically query my contacts and then find out the email address when I just provide the name. And that's what we will implement. For this, I already prepared two classes. The first class is our contact record. 
it's just a simple Java record where we have a first name, last name, email, and company. So this represents our contact from our address book. Now we also have our address book service, which is again just an application scope bean. And here I have some hard-coded contact lists. So we have Brent Meyer, uh, one time working at the Consys. We have Hans Molman working at the Consys, but also Hans Molman, a different one, working for a different company. And these are our contacts. And here we have our tool. Our tool allows us to look up the email address and company for a person with the given first name and last name. So we have two parameters, first name and last name. Again, we just print a log statement here, but then also we go through our contacts and just find if the first name and last name exactly matches. Of course, again, this is a Quarkus bean, so you can inject your entity manager here and do whatever queries on your database or inject the REST client and make some API calls to get the relevant data here. Now, after we filter the contacts, we just return the list of contacts that match. So, for example, if we would search for Hans Molman, we would find two records here. Again, after we've annotated it with a tool, we can simply use this in our mail AI service. And that's all we need to do to enable our agent to use this tool. So let's start Quarkus again and test it. So Quarkus has started. Let's switch over to Postman to make some calls. This time I will change up the query a bit and I will say, hey, I'm Andreas. I want to write an email to Hans Molman. And let's see what ChatGPT returns. Okay, now we see here, ChatGPT knows the email address of both Hans Molmans, the one from Occurrences and the one from Molman Org. How does this work? In the background, when we check the logs, we can see a couple of calls have been made. So here we see the initial request, where when we have a look into it, we see the function get address for name is provided. We see send email to recipient is provided. And we see our user query, hi, I am Andreas. I want to write an email to Hans Molman. So now ChatGPT responded with this here. Let's also copy it over. So it responded with a function call to get address for name with the first name Hans and the last name Molman. And that leads to Quarkus calling our function. And that's why we see here the log for the address book service, looking up contact and contact booked for Hans Molman. And with that, Quarkus builds the next response to ChatGPT automatically. So here we see the call from, the, from ChatGPT, from the assistant, to get address for name with the two parameters. And here we see the result from the tool where we get the content, which is an array with first name Hans, last name Molman. And also we have the second entry, also Hans and Molman, but from a different company. So in this case, we returned multiple entries as a list to ChatGPT and Quarkus just transformed this to a JSON. The JSON is provided to ChatGPT and it can now work with that. So let's continue our conversation. So we can tell ChatGPT, I meant the run from Arconsys. So ChatGPT will now figure out, okay, we are talking about Arconsys as the company, so it will use the Hans Molman at Arconsys.com. Now we can go back to our normal flow. We can say, um, yeah, I want to write an email about Quarkus to provide the assistant with the information it needs to create a content and subject for our email. So now we got a draft from ChatGPT where it says, here's a draft and it created a subject and also a mail to Hans and with warm regards. So it somehow did not use my name for the regards. So now let's write a query so it can put it there as well. 
Now it put my name there and the mail looks good to me. So let's send it. And again, in the background, if we check the logs, we see that our request is sent to ChatGPT first, and then we will soon see the response from ChatGPT. Here we see now we got a response, which again calls the function call. Let's have a look at the body here. We call the function send email to recipient to this email address. And with that provided content. Here we see also that we lock this again from our email service where we could have now sent an email. And then we send the next request to ChatGPT where we tell ChatGPT, hey, the function call worked fine. And then we get back a nice success message. The email has been sent successfully. And that's it already. Now you have seen how you can use Quarkus and Langchain to easily create agents with ChatGPT by just annotating some functions in your Quarkus service with add tool and providing the class to the register AI service annotation. And then ChatGPT can already call functions in your service to either perform some actions like sending an email or query some data like querying the database, getting contact information, retrieving additional documents to provide better responses and perform actual actions. We hope you have enjoyed this episode. Please like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future episodes and see you next time. Bye bye.